we had, so we had fun on that and everything. So, but the way, the way I met Alan was through that because he, he, he uh, called me up once in the eighties and he said, uh, it was, it was uh, in the winter time and, and he goes, Hey, listen, uh, I have this huge tour going to Europe. Uh, this is 1987. Hmm. And he goes, I got this big tour going through Europe. It's going to, he goes, but it's, uh, it's two and a half months long, 10 wow, weeks long. Jesus, that's long. And, uh, which was exciting and stuff and all through Europe and all that. And, but I, I was, uh, just mar married for seven years and I had three kids. <laughs> One was only a year old at that oh, time. Man. And, uh, and then I told Stanley, I'm like, man, that sounds that sounds great. I'd love to do this. It's exciting, but I need to talk to my wife because we had to make some kind of plans to for the kids, and you know, I'm gonna be gone. And back then, there was no FaceTime, and you know, you, you couldn't even call from hotels in Europe yeah, because yeah. Yeah. it was expensive, and you couldn't get a good connection. You know, so two and a half months away from the family was was a lot. But I said, let me talk to my wife, and we'll see how I can fit. He goes, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, you know, do, see what you can do and everything. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, Alan Holsworth is opening up for us on the whole tour. And I said, wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what, what'd you say? He goes, oh, so Alan's going to be our opening act for the whole wow. two and a half months. And, you know, I mean, I'm a huge Holsworth fan and never, never talked to him or anything, but I was a giant fan. And then, so I just said, oh, is that the, really, is that the case? Uh, Hey, I, I can do the tour, man. I can do the tour. I'll do it. I'll definitely. And he goes, do you need to talk to your wife? I'm like, she's going to be cool. Don't, it's going to be all right. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm not going to pass this up, you know, yeah. just to be hanging with Alan for two and a half months and whatever. I had no dream that he would ask me to play, but it's just like, I get this. So, so we started this tour and, uh, uh, they, they played first. All my stuff would be set up for Stanley's gig, but, they would play and then uh and then he one after about a week i would show up at every one of his shows just before we played and listen and chad warkin was playing chad's brother was playing bass it was just the trio oh okay and uh so it was it was uh i guess jimmy johnson couldn't do it so that so chad's brother who plays really great played bass and uh and alan and alan had just had the syntax and i think he had just done sand he finished sand yeah, i think okay and I have a strong, so he, the syntax was new. So he, he had it out with him. Uh, but it's, if you're doing a trio with guitar, I mean, you probably, if you're playing and you get to the solo section and you play a solo, you can stop and play a chord or yeah. play a couple of notes. But they, he had a problem with the syntax because it was just single notes playing. And yeah, then sure. all of a sudden, yeah. like on, on uh, Looking Glass and Pudwood, and all these tunes, there was there was no chords because it's just a trio. So they played with a cassette. Seriously. So what Chad did is they made they made a cassette with a click track. It was just a tambourine on on the left channel of a cassette. And then they they mapped it out so that when the solo started, Alan had recorded the chords to the solo. So when so when they played Looking Glass, for instance, mm -hmm. they would play. Yeah. He would play the song, but Chad had to listen to this click track. Wow. And when they got to the solo, Alan's chords would come in on the cassette, and it would feed back into his amps. And then he would change to a solo sound. He would solo on the syntax, and then. But they had to do it exactly the same way every sure. night. And if for whatever reason they got off by a beat or a measure which they, they, it would be completely off, you know? So they, and Chad hated it because he had this tambourine banging him in the head. <laughs> Alan had hated it because if he wanted to do another course, he couldn't. And so, so we were on the bus. This is about after a week. He goes, Hey, Hey, do you want to, do you want to sit in with us? And, and, uh, so we can get rid of this effing cassette, man. We hate this effing cassette, man. <laughs> and so, <laughs> And so he, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm here. I can play the, I can play chords, you know? So he wrote out a few little things. I figured out, so he showed me some stuff on, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five songs, like Looking Glass, oh, Pudwood, uh, a few others. And uh, uh, I, I forget the tunes I played, but it was, it was a good chunk of the set. And uh, so I just started playing with him, you know? And, and uh, 
that's how, that's how it happened. Wow, well, so it was really natural, I, so, basically. So my, my, luck, my luck was I got to replace a cassette that was, you know, I, I'm, I'm slightly better than a cassette. So I got the gig, you know. And so, uh, and, and the other thing, I had Oberheim, like, I had Oberheims yeah, and DX7s, yeah. and, and I used big, because I was really into Joe Zalwinall court. So I had all these kind of Zalwinall sounds and patches and, Oh, and stuff amazing. and and he lo he loved that kind of stuff too alan yeah. very orchestral organic kind of uh kind of sounds uh but anyway so he uh yeah. so then I, I, I towards the end of the tour he goes hey listen i i have a a tour with my band coming up in september would you care to join us you know wow. if you would if you would like and he was very humble like, oh so, please please i love this so, so yeah so anyway that that uh that's that's how i joined the band and then he said you know he's very humble and he's like oh do you I don't know if you want to do this or not, you know, but you can let me know. And I have this tour coming up and yeah, you probably don't want to do it, but you know, would you, would you care to, would you care to join us on the tour? And I was like, I was like, Oh my God. You know, I was trying to keep my component. I'm like, Oh, I think I can do it. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to. And I had to learn That's all the other tunes. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, uh, I have a good friend here in Boston, a guitar player, Bruce Bartlett, that mm -hmm. we used to get together and learn Alan's tunes together. And we had a, we had a band together. And uh, in fact, we my band opened up for Alan years before. Oh, really? Oh, well, and, okay. and here, a friend of mine produced the Alan concert here in uh, Salem, Massachusetts. And uh, we we op and so my friend said, "Hey, do you want to open up for Alan?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that'd be great." So this guitar player Bruce Bartlett, and Jimmy Earl was in the band, oh. and then uh, we had a local drummer Ed Uribe, and then uh, we opened up for Alan. But Alan didn't get to hear us play because they were driving from New Jersey. And there was a big storm and they were really late. So his, his roadie, Gordy, who I know now, he came up, he goes, you guys have to play more tunes because they're stuck coming up from New York. I'm like, all right. So we played extra tunes and we were like nervous opening up for Alan. We were like kids, you know, and, uh, he, uh, and then, so I got to see his show. I was like, it was like oh, so happy. Yeah. And then, but I was too nervous. To, I saw after the show, he was talking to a bunch of people, very nice, you know, but I was too nervous to actually go speak to him. So I never I never introduced myself or talked to him. I was like, wow. "Oh my God, there's God." I mean, Alan, I mean, God. It's like, so, I, so I never met him then. So, so it, he was very humble. He's like, "Oh," he goes, "Oh." Uh, so after after he asked me to do a tour, I I got a postcard. I think we were in, I don't know, Germany or something. I got a postcard and and I wrote it to my friend Bruce Bartlett. I, and the only thing I put on the thing, I just put, "I got the gig." And I and I sent it to Bruce, <laughs> and he knew what exactly oh, what yeah, I was sir. talking about. And I think he still has it up on his wall somewhere in his, so his 